Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. My name is Jakob. I work as a CTO for uh, Acceleration. And today I want to talk about AI transformation in marketing and show you a couple of client cases uh, that we've done in collaboration with our clients. I also want to talk a little bit about how AI can be used to amplify the impact of your marketing investment and help you drive sustainable growth over time. But first, let me say a little bit about acceleration. Oh. So, acceleration is part of WPP. And for those of you who don't know WPP, it's the biggest communication group in the world with just over 100,000 uh, people. Within WPP, we help clients modernize and transform their marketing by using data and technology and AI. We're part of a, a global uh, team, so we have offices around the world, including an office here in Lisbon, which opened earlier this year. And then we're center of excellence on a number of important technology platforms within WPP, for example, a Google Marketing Platform. And last but not least, we have some absolutely amazing clients that we work for across the globe, across different industries, and with very different business challenges. So back to AI. I think whenever we talk about AI, there always seems to be quite a lot of hype involved. I love some of the, some of the headings on this slide. For example, 40% of AI startups in Europe don't actually use AI. Or startups are exploiting AI's hasty definition to cash in on the hype. Or my favorite one, if it's written in Python, it's probably machine learning. If it's written in PowerPoint, it's probably AI. And it's really a bit of a shame because AI is an absolutely amazing tool if you know how to use it and you use it to solve the right business problems. So we don't need all the hype. So in this presentation, I'm going to, walk, uh, going to step away from the hype and talk about how we can deliver real business value for clients with AI. Six years ago, we started a collaboration with MIT. The purpose of that collaboration was to really elevate our own understanding of AI and how to use it and when to use it. So every year for the last six years, a combined team of people across MIT and Acceleration have been working together on solving real world business problems for our clients using AI and machine learning. So we've created some absolutely amazing solution based on that partnership. We've also created some solutions when, which weren't that amazing, but we've had an opportunity to really experiment with AI with some of the best data science talents in the world. And that has given us kind of what I would call a really st steep learning curve. One of the side benefits of doing the collaboration with MIT is that we have also seen 150 data science projects that MIT have done with other global clients or other global brands. And when we look across all those 150 data science projects, it's amazing how different they are. They are across different verticals and industries. They focus on different business problems at different positions in the value chain. And it just shows how versatile a tool that AI and machine learning is. I'll give you some examples here. The first one is for, uh, for Starbucks, who wants to predict maintenance and cleaning for espresso machines based on IoT telemetry data. The next one is for Pfizer, who wants to increase production of Prevenar by 3% by designing the optimal factory production schedule. And the next one is for an FMCG client who wants to optimize shipments to ca of cases to Walmart and Amazon by predicting point of sales demand. So three very, very different use cases. Now the final part of the value chain is marketing and sales. And that's our home turf as acceleration. So I have three case studies that I would like to show to you. The first one is for Specsavers, a global optician chain. The next one is for Volvo, car manufacturer. 
And the last one is for Lael, a global FMCG brand. So let's start with Specsavers. So Specsavers spent a lot of money on digital marketing. That money is focused on getting consumers to go to Specsavers website. When they are on the website, they can go in and make an online appointment in the local Specsaver store with the local optician. Then they go down, get their eyes checked, and buy glasses or contact lenses. That's a very simplified version of Specsaver's consumer journey. There's just one problem on that consumer journey, and that is when people go in and try to book an online appointment, and there's no available time slots with the local optician in the local store over the next week, then there's an incredible high drop-off rate. So spec savers are losing sales, and they're wasting money on digital marketing. We came up with a solution for that together with spec savers. And that is, what if we could reduce the advertising investment in catchment areas around stores where there's very few available time slots? and increase ad spend in the catchment areas around stores where there's high availability to take new customers in. And this is just kind of a, this is just a snapshot, a time and place. So of course the availability for different stores changes all the time. Whenever new time slots are released or whenever uh, people book existing time slots. This is what the solution looks like. So it was developed in Google Cloud. We use two different uh, data sources, the Specsavers appointment feed and catchment area analysis. We brought that together and built a model that could predict the likelihood that a person would book an appointment in a given catchment area based on the capacity level in that catchment area. And we then used that decision to decide what should the level of spend be in that catchment area. We then push that information to Google and to Facebook, where spec savers are spending the majority of their digital marketing spend. So we took this solution, developed it, and put it in place in one market. And what we saw was that the number of online bookings increased by 15% compa compared to not using this solution. That's a really significant sales impact for a company like spec savers. So this is an example of a bespoke AI solution that solves a specific business problem and delivers value. And even more important, it allows spec savers to kind of progress on their AI transformation curve and move towards the next level. The next case I have is very different. It's for Volvo, and I just have a video of that. Every morning, yeah. just a pile, gotta get up. Dead or alive, it's hard times in the middle of my life. So Volvo creates thousands of digital video ads just like these. <clears throat> they then show the ads to consumers on YouTube, YouTube, on Facebook, on other digital platforms. When the campaigns have been running for a while, Volvo looks at how the campaign is performing and they then decide whether they want to keep on, go, keep on going with that campaign or whether they want to stop it. So they came to us with a challenge, and that challenge was, can we decide whether we should progress with these campaigns before they have even gone on air, before any consumers have seen the campaigns? So we came up with a, uh, we came up with a solution for that. We came up with a solution for that, and that is a solution that we've developed together with MIT that's called Peggy AI. Peggy AI takes video ads and extracts as much information from those video ads as we probably can. And that's everything from the content of the video ad to the audio, whether that is music or whether it's people talking, to text logos, subtitles, prices, to the artistic, uh, what do you call it, the artistic background in video ads, etc., etc. 
It then takes all that content and puts it into a systematic database where we can actually analyze and work with the data at scale. And it does that automatically without any human intervention. So we used Peggy AI on Volvo's entire uh, digital video catalog. And then we could use that to help Volvo in a couple of different ways. First of all, we could de do what I would call a meta-analysis, where we could tell Volvo for each of the different features in the video ads, which one has a positive impact on the performance and which one has a negative impact on performance. Here's an example where we looked at the tone of voice, where videos with an exuberance feel had a positive impact on performance, and videos with a contentment or frantic uh, element had a negative impact on performance. The other thing we could do with Peggy AI is we could feed it different video ads and ask it to predict which of these video ads is going to have the biggest performance or the highest performance. In this case, it was the first one of these. How accurate are these predictions? In many cases, they're highly accurate, but in some cases, not as accurate as we would like them to be. And that kind of comes down to some of the uh, challenges with AI. It needs quite a lot of data to work and to be able to accurately predict the performance of a video. But as Volvo continues to produce more video ads and feed that to this tool, it will get more and more accurate over time. Now, the great thing about this one is we build it to analyze video ads, but we could also use it on TV ads. And in fact, we could also use it on still pictures, like out-of-home posters or print ads or other channels. The final case I've got for you is for, uh, for Loyal. Uh, and Loyal is one of the biggest media spenders in the world. Uh, they have a large portfolio of different products and different brands that they sell across, or they have a global footprint, so pretty much across all markets. And then they work with resellers uh, to sell those brands or products to consumers, like health and beauty stores or supermarkets or even e-commerce players. They came to us and then they asked us whether we could help them use AI to optimize our media investment and deliver revenue growth. By optimizing the investment, in the right brands, across the right markets, and at the right time. So we, built, we developed an AI system to do that, and we called it Tidal. And I have a video I'd like to, uh, to share with you. As consumers move consumption of both media and beauty products online, L'Oreal has been challenged to extend their core competencies to include the accelerating world of digital. In 2020, in cooperation with Acceleration and Wavemaker, L'Oreal formed a task force. By looking at the different ad formats and the data created throughout the Facebook platform, collaborative ads was identified as especially interesting due to its ability to draw out sales data from e-commerce partners and link it with the L'Oreal ads. With reliable sales data in place, we were able to build Tidal, a bespoke artificial intelligence that could predict the sales for each of the e-commerce partners across 20 brands and four markets. Tidal was able to build a total of 63 predictive models across the Nordics, as time passed and Tidal was exposed to more and more campaigns and sales data, it became better and better at predicting the outcome of future campaigns. Today, Tidal is working around the clock to increase the efficiency of every single media investment and is even challenging the way our organization is structured to create a higher degree of agility in budget allocation across brands and markets. Fantastic. So with Title, we actually managed to increase the return on investment for Loyal on their uh, media investment in, in Facebook by 22%. So again, I think a bespoke piece of AI or bespoke AI solution that generates a sales impact for one of our clients. So that was three different case studies 
of how we can use AI to amplify the impact of marketing. But it's just three out of many. In fact, if we look across the 150 data science projects I mentioned earlier that MIT have done together with clients, about 50% of those projects were focused on delivering value within the marketing part of the value chain. And that to me is what marketing or AI transformation in marketing is about. It's about identifying opportunities within the marketing function where we can apply, apply AI to automate and, and optimize different tasks. So the final question is, how do we then, how do we do that or how do we get started? And in my experience, the best way to do that is by trying to create a culture of experimentation where you experiment with different AI solutions, you have the right measurement framework in place to decide whether those solutions are successful or not, and then you scale the really successful solutions and you, uh, you kill the solutions that don't live up to the promise. And then make sure as you go through this, you create a learning loop where you pick up as much knowledge about what works with AI and what doesn't work with AI. So there's no shortcut, it's a lot of hard work. The good thing is it's extremely rewarding and it's a lot of fun at the same time. That's all from me. Thanks for your time. <laughs>